Hi, this is Todd with Land of Math. In this video, we're going to look at how you can calculate the volume of a cylinder, much like this Ovaltine can right here. The video is going to be broken into three sections. First, some of the basic terminology of cylinders. Second, the formula that we're going to use to calculate the volume. And then finally, we're going to do three different examples showing you how we can calculate the volume of a cylinder. All that's coming up next on Land of Math. All right, volume of a cylinder. Couple things we need to be aware of. First of all, the cylinder has a base and the base happens to be a circle and there's two of them. They're parallel with each other, same size. Also another key thing is the height of the cylinder. Now I also kind of think of this as the distance between the two bases. So that's some key information. Next we need to talk about the formula to actually calculate the volume of the cylinder. Now for us, what we're going to do is take the volume, or to find the volume, we're going to take the area of the base, which we mentioned was a circle, and then we're going to multiply that by um, the height of the cylinder, or the distance between the two bases. So our formula to find volume would be volume equals 3.14, which is the number we're going to use to represent pi, times the radius squared, and it will take that times the height of the uh, cylinder. The 3.14 times radius squared, that is actually how you find area of a circle. And since we know the circle is going to always be the base, that's how you would get it. Now you're usually going to write it down more like 3.14 times r squared. We usually don't write out the word radius and then times h. So that's the formula right there to calculate the volume of a cylinder. So let's look at three examples. The first example we're going to look at is the Pringles can. Now in this particular one right here, again, we already know that the circle is the base. So I'm measuring in centimeters in this one, and I see that my diameter is 7.4, which is the distance across. The height or the distance between my bases is 12 centimeters. So those are two key numbers. So to get the volume, we're going to take pi, which again is 3.14, and we're going to multiply it by the radius squared times height. Now we need to get the radius squared. So we have pi 3.14 times 3.7 squared times 12. Now you might ask, where did you get the 3.7? Well, the diameter is 7.4. The radius is half the distance across the circle. So we just cut that in half and got 3.7. So we'll square that. So in our old handy dandy calculator, I'll go pi 3.14 times 3.7 squared, and then times 12, because that was our height. And when we do that, we come up with 515.8392, or 8,392 ten thousandths. Now, you can round this off, depending on how what your teacher wants you to do, or however you would like to do it. So we could round it off as 0.84. Our second example is with a hot chocolate container. So we already know, again, the, the, the formula is pi 3.14 times radius squared times height. So we already know that. The diameter of this particular base is 4 inches. So we're working in inches this time. Well, if the diameter is 4, half that's 2. So the radius would be 2. So it's going to be 2 squared and then times the height. Well, the height of this is 5 and a fourth. We're going to go decimals and call it 5.25. So we have pi times 2 squared times 5.25. We know that the 2 squared would be 4, so I can just kind of do that in my head. So now we have pi times 4 times 5.25. And then when we do that, that's going to give us our answer to the volume of this particular cylinder, which is 65.94, and then this would be inches cubed. Our last example is our cylinder that I'm just going to call the stripes. So this is like a sewing box or something at our house. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is measure the diameter. So going across, we're doing it in inches, it's 12 inches. And then the height is in 4 inches. So again, we know it's pi times radius squared times height. So plugging in our numbers, it's going to be pi times... If the diameter is 12, that means the radius is 6. So it's 6 squared times the height, which is 4. 
And so what I could do first is just do the 6 squared, because I can kind of do that in my head. 6 times 6 is 36. And at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and use the calculator and make it a little quicker and easier. So we just go 3.14 times 36 times 4, and that gives us 452.16, and then that would be inches cubed. Well, I hope this was helpful. You can always stop by and visit us at The Land of Math. We'd love it if you would give it a thumbs up, and we would really love it if you would subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time on The Land of Math.